Hi, good morning. Welcome to the webinar about the three-phase separator. Today, I'm with a, a lot of people around me. It's very nice. I have a Christian Remillard helping me as the cameraman, Francois Xavier, and uh, exceptionally, we have uh, Mr. Stefan Kast, that's the project manager. So let's get started and welcome everybody. So what we're going to have in the presentation today, first, we're going to talk a little bit about who we are, then about the learning solutions that we provide. Then we're going to get directly into our three-phase separator. We're going to make a small demo exercise about the three-phase separator, and then some questions at the end of the webinar. <clears throat> so who we are? In 1925, Festo was founded in Germany by Mr. Gottlieb Stoll, and they started the enterprise as an enterprise that was building tools for carpentry, for woodworking. In 1955, the pneumatics arrived. So all these new technologies start being used by Festo, and very quickly we became the leader in the world in pneumatics. All this development in 1965 led us to the creation of Festo Didactic. All these new technologies that were developing very fast, they found that we need to train the new technicians, the new engineers with these technologies. So Festo Didactic was born. In 2014, Festo joined the American Canadian Lab Vault to become a larger enterprise in the didactic industry. In 2020, we are placed as the first providers in the world in didactic products. So this is a very small resume of what is the history of Festo Didactic. What are the technology fields we touch in Festo Didactic? First, we do factory automation, then process automation, fluid power, building system technologies, environmental and renewable energy, electronics, electric power technology, industrial trades, communication and radar technology, and HVAC and refrigeration. So as you see, we cover a lot of areas and we can provide a lot of equipment for several technologies. So here we have a picture of the building from which one we are broadcasting today from Quebec City, Canada. And here we have the people that is involved today all the four of us were here. So I'm going to present from right to left. First is Mr. Christian Remillard. Then in the middle of the three guys is uh, Francois Xavier, me, Gonzalo in uh, the right. And we have in that picture, engineer Stefan Kass, that he's the product manager for the three-phase separator. That's the brain behind the, the system. So I will give the word to Stefan Kass. Stefan, good morning. Good morning. So welcome everybody. I'm really happy to have you all with us. Uh, I'm the, my name is Stefan Kass. I'm the product manager for instrumentation and process automation product at Festo Didactic. So uh, as uh, you probably know, we have a, a, a really large portfolio for instrumentation and process automation product. And uh, we started developing the uh, industrial solution for process automation in 2007, 2008. And we have expanded that portfolio for many years. And the latest product that we developed was a three-phase separator to create uh, <clears throat> a new learning program for oil and gas uh, industry with different solutions. So we work with partners in the oil and gas industry to develop a product that will uh, uh, that has the same behavior as you would find in the industry. And I'm really happy today to have our team presenting the product and I'll be uh, in, the, in the webinar to answer the question if uh, you, there's specific question. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Stefan. Uh, Francois, uh, do we have any handouts to provide to the assistance of the webinar? 
Uh, yes, Gonzalo, we do have three handouts. One is a description, a short description of the system. Uh, we have a data sheet and we also have the, the list of uh, exercises that we can do in the first manual. You can all download that in the uh, documents to share box. Back to you, uh, Gonzalo. Thanks so much. Also, I want to remind you that uh, Francois is going to be handling the chat box and the question box and he's or in uh, Christian Remy art as well. So any question, just uh, put it in the chat box and uh, if they can answer it directly, they will do it. Otherwise they will pass it to me. But if your question is uh, very high tech, then we'll ask Stefan for help. Okay, so let's get into our learning solutions. So we have power generation, we have oil and gas processes, and we have water treatment in this area of products that we're going to talk today. So how we design our learning solutions. In the beginning, we're going to join in a group, teachers, industry specialists, and our FESTO expert to establish what are the learning objectives on a certain subject. After we get the learning objectives, we're going to build up what kind of lab exercises are going to be the best to be able to teach these objectives to the students. Once we know what kind of exercises we want to do, we're going to make some specifications for the equipment. Now we're going to know what elements should be integrated in the hardware. After this is done, we're going to go to the strategy for the learning system. How this is going to be achieved we are going to build the hardware. And once the hardware is done, then the technical writer comes in and is going to write the manuals that are going to be accompanying the hardware and the exercises that are going to be done by the students. So now we know that all the exercises that are in the books have been really tested with the equipment and they work and you can repeat them a lot of times with similar results. So what we have in the three-phase separator? We have basically two main areas. The three-phase separator basic control in which one we're going to use this machine that is a reduction of the real one that we can find it in the oil fields as a three-phase separator. So we're going to learn everything about the phases, oil, gases, water, how they're going to be treated, what are the processes, what are the chemical processes involved on this, and how we control it. And then the other area is instrumentation. We're going to take the advantage that we have um, multiple stage process. We have several stages that are happening in the separation of the three elements of the three phases to put all the modern instrumentation that we have and learn about instrumentation. So this system is also a very, very good instrumentation lab. So that's why we have these two main books. So in the basic control, what we have? We have the three-phase separator. We're going to talk about what is an emulsion, the 3D methods and the separation mechanism. What kind of separators we have in the industry, where we can apply them, this is not only going to be used in the oil industry, there are other industries that are going to use reactor kind devices that are going to handle gases, liquids, solids. So the students are going to learn how to handle phases that are mixed. We need to mix them or we need to separate them. How the vessels are designed, what sections they have, what are the internal components? What would be the safety around these uh, vessels, this opera the operation of the three-phase separator in this case, we're talking about a tank that is pressurized. So how we're going to handle something that is pressurized? What is the effect of the different operation parameters? Flow rate, water, oil ratios, the mixing. How we adjust the level of the float switches to operate accurate depending on the process. So we're going to go through different elements that we have in the trainer to see how we are going to make all these adjustments. In the instrumentation, we're going to talk in the beginning about the HMI. So how the HMI 
is built, what are the concepts that are inside the HMI, what we need to give to the operator, what elements the operator can change, what can monitor, what elements are restricted that we can change parameters and configurations, how to use the systems of alarms. When we have high levels, low levels, what are the warnings? What is the criteria to make all this? What is the role of the operator when it sees the alarm, alarms? Then the role of the PLC. So how the PLC is going to join everything that comes from the instruments, the interaction with the operator from the HMI, and how everything gets together. Now we're going to learn also how to install different instrumentation, for example, the turbine and the Coriolis, the magnetic flow meter, a temperature transmitter, the guided radar, the pressure differential transmitters. So how to install them? What are the good practices? How to configure them to make them work in a specific way that is uh, the good way for the process we are talking about? And then how the hard protocol of communication works. This will be an optional exercise in the second book. So do we have uh, any questions? No, Gonzalo. Hi, Gonzalo. Go ahead, yeah, Christian. Uh, I have no question here from, uh, from the audience for the moment. What were you about to say, uh, Gonzalo? Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, you know, well, uh, some, some, sometimes our uh, audience, uh, they have questions regarding other systems, but, but please uh, write to services.didactic at festo.com and don't hesitate. The, the guys that work with us, they are really quick at answering and you're welcome to do so. Back to you, Gonzalo. Perfect. Thanks so much, Christian, and thanks so much, uh, Francois. So, there's a compromise when we're building our products. We want to make a product that has a very high didactic value because our main goal is give a good academic background to the students. So we need a didactic product. But then we need something that is real. So we're going to make a mix between realism and didactic value. If we have just a real product, yeah, it's the right one, it's the real one, but it's very hard to learn if you have a machine that is already working and you don't know how it is done inside. Or we can have just a didactic system that has no industrial instrumentation. So the limited the, the value of the, the didactic value is very, very limited. Or we can have a simulation or, or an emulation that has a very high didactic value. The concepts are going to be clear, but when the student goes to the field, it's going to face something else. So then we're going to join all this together and we try to make something that is as close as the real equipment, so it's very realistic, and give it a very high didactic value. So joining all these concepts, we made the three-phase separator that you see right next to me. So now let's get into the three-phase separator. So we have an overview of the process automation. We may have the process control, the control room, the HMIs. We have all the instrumentation that are everything that allows us to know what is happening in the process. These are the, the eyes and the ears and the hands of the process. And then we have the process technician that is going to run all these make the repairs and make all the factories continue running. So in the industry segments that we have in process automation, this is not a full list, but we have chemical, pharmaceutical. Right now, everybody's talking about the pharmaceutical industry. So we're going to be facing a very large production of the vaccine and the vaccine has to be well done. So all the instrumentation in the process to make it is already set with this kind of instruments and the process they do. Also food and beverage, water and wastewater, pulp and paper, oil and gas, power generation, and mining. So basically all the industries that are producing something 
are going to have control, instrumentation, and technicians that are working on them, making them run. So in the oil and gas program that we developed here in Festo, we have several trainers that are going to touch different aspects that the students, they need to learn to be uh, very well qualified as technicians. So we have mechanics, fluid power, electricity, we have pumps, instrumentation and process control, and we're going to join all this knowledge and all this is going to be applied to the industry. So they can do the maintenance of the industries, help build new industries, or just change the processes within the industries that we have, being able to make new products. In all these products, we're introducing now the three-phase separator. So where do we have oil and gas? We see it that we have basically everywhere in the planet. If there are some countries that they don't produce oil, they may import oil. So the oil industry basically is present everywhere. This map is just a little sample of what we have. There are other areas that are also using oil and gas in the world. So let's talk a little bit of what is fracking. So when we're searching for the oil and the gas, everything is underneath. So we're going to make a well, we're going to go to the shale and the oil is like in a kind of a sponge there, but it will not flow very easy. It's not like having a internal lake. So we need to squeeze this sponge. How we're going to squeeze it, we're going to introduce sands and water and some chemicals at high pressure. We're going to crack this uh, sponge a little bit and help squeeze it out. And then in the way back, we're going to have oil, but the oil is going to come with gas and water the natural water it has the oil plus the water we inject. So now we have a mix of water, gas, oil, and some solids that then we need to separate them. So then the three-phase separator is the first device that the oil when it goes out of the well is going to be facing. So we see there in the bottle, it's like a, let's say natural vinaigrette. So we have an emulsion of oil, water, a little bit of sand, salts, and plenty of other things. So this has to be separated in the three main sub products that will be gas, oil, and water. So the water may be re-injected and reuse it because this water is not going to be very clean, let's say. The oil, we're going to use it to give it to the refineries and the gas also, we're going to put it in bottles and do further processing. So we can see that we have several kinds of three-phase separators. They are very large. We can see in the pictures. So we made a small copy of it, but a working copy. As we can see in the picture, we have some students looking at a model of a three-phase separator, but it's a static model. It's just a cutout of a very small model that is not a working model, just to see what parts we have inside. So we can see here the difference. We have a didactic product, the vessel in the lower picture and the real one. So yeah, both of them are good, but we need to have something in between. So we have our three-phase separator. It's a model that is small enough to fit in the classroom. As you see, it's transparent, so we can see what is happening inside, what are the elements inside. We're going to see how the process runs inside. And we have industrial instrumentation. Plus the manuals that are, are written for this equipment. Now we have a very realistic product with a very high didactic value. So we see here that we have a lot of components. We have different transmitters, pumps. We have the tanks. We have the main tank that is the three-phase separator 
we have the, the calls and plates that we're going to go through them in a little bit. So this you is the want to show the components on the camera, Gonzalo, or? Yep. No? So right now we're going to take a little bit of a tour of the system. Perfect. So, so here we have the pressure transmitters, pressure differential transmitters. We have a radar transmitter for the level. So we can see here that we have the gas volume and the liquid, but in the liquid we have oil and the water. So this is Festa Petroleum, that's why it's blue. So the radar is this device. What it's going to do is going to send a pulse. The pulse is going to be reflected as an echo in the first surface. It's going to continue traveling to the second surface, that's the layer between the water and the oil, and come back. So with one single device, we're going to have the two levels so we can know exactly what will be the, let's say the mix, the amount of oil and water present in the system. We have here three rotameters, oil, gas, and water. So here we are going to recreate what kind of, let's say petroleum we're getting from the underground. So we're going to make the mix the way we want. All this mix comes from our oil tank, our water tank. Here we are not going to see it because of the position of the trainer, but behind I have an inline mixer. So we're going to make a very well mixed emulsion. The emulsion is coming up here through this hose and enters to the three phase separator. We go through this plate, drops down, and we arrive to the coalescent plates. So the coalescent plates are going to push the emulsion and they're going to make it move in a certain way that the molecules are going to start joining together, coalescing, until we have the oil, the water being separated. Right now, the system is not working. We're going to make it run in a while. Then we're going to see how this actually works. Then here in this area, we're going to have oil and water already separated. And here we have like a small wall that is going to separate the oil and some of the gas that remains. And now we have here in this area, just oil, water, and gas. To take out the gas, we're going to go through the, the mister. So all the droplets of oil in this case will keep on dropping down to the oil. And we have basically the three main products. We're going to have gas coming out from here, oil and water. Here we have two drives, one for oil, one for water that are going to be running the two pumps. So the mix, normally we put the drives at a certain constant speed and then with the rotameters, we're going to search what amount of oil and water we want to let into the three-phase separator. Here we have the electrical box. All the electrical connections are inside here. We have our emergency push button, one breaker in this area. And we have the HMI. If we go to the other side, so here we have the monitoring unit. So here we're going to connect all our instruments. We have our air inlet. In this case, the gas we're using is just air. We have a gas flow meter, and in this case, just an orifice plate with the two hoses that go to a differential transmitter. We have here three vibrating forks, like this one. 
that are going to allow us to know what is the level of the different uh, elements. Here we have a back pressure regulator. All the devices, they have these plates that tell you the names. Here we have a safety valve for the pressure. And also here we have this disc. This is the burst disc. So when the pressure arrives to a certain level that we considered the maximum, the limit, and let's say this valve fails and something else fails, this one is just going to blow. So it's like placing a mechanical fuse. We're creating a known weakness in the system. So if there's a problem here, we're going to have the problem and we know and we want it here. Here we have this big device that is the display, uh, pneumatic displacement lever controller. So we have a fancy float here. Going to open it. So we have a float that right now it's basically floating in the middle of oil and water. So now the float is not either in oil or water. So with this mechanism here, what we're going to do is we're going to change basically the density of the float. So we're going to calibrate it to actuate exactly in a certain level or a certain mix of water and oil. So this is the same device that we have in a real three-phase separator. Also, we have these small boxes here with valves so we can shut off the air to create uh, errors or create mistakes, create faults. We have also faults in the HMI. And the last thing that we need to talk about is on top, well, we, I talked already of the burst disk, the radar, and here we have a vibrating fork and a thermocouple, temperature transmitter. Can you show again the, the vibrate vibrat rating fork, please, Gonzalo? This one? Yeah. I don't know if you can see uh, it. There's a lot of, uh, yeah, there's a lot of fog paper. Inside. Yep. Okay. So we're going to see it in the pictures in the PowerPoint and you, we can have a better view of the vibrating fork. And in the other side, the mixer that we cannot see it due to the position of the trainer. So let's go back to the PowerPoint presentation. First, we and, have a question, Gonzalo, a really good one. Yep. And uh, it might be for you or for uh, Stefan. Uh, so we have somebody asking, uh, what is the difference between the 3531 process control training system and the three-phase separator? So is it possible that uh, they can be used across programs, uh, not only uh, for the oil industry, uh, the three-phase separator? So I don't know if uh, Stefan or you yep, want to. I can, uh, I can answer that. OK, so. We have the 3531. If you have the 3531, the three-phase separator will be an excellent addition for your lab because now you have different instrumentation than you have in the 3531. So you can get a larger, you can give your students a larger knowledge in instrumentation and then control, but this one will not be a PID control. This will be an on-off control because we recreate exactly the same way it is done in uh, the real oil and industry. And then you go to the 3531, in which one you have process control, the PID. So both, they go hand by hand. It's not that one replaces the another one. It's uh, having both in the lab would be an excellent idea. I don't know if, if uh, Stefan wants to put a, some other ideas uh, on this question? Uh, yes, so the 3531, you know, is a progressive training solution. So with uh, the 3531, you start from the beginning. So you start from scratch and you learn progressively about fluid mechanic, uh, uh, basic tra transmitter, how to configure the transmitter, and then you learn how to do uh, process control. So it is the three-phase separator is an initial application of what students can learn first on the 3531, which is more progressive. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Stefan. 
Okay. So who can be trained with a three-phase separator? We can train operators, technicians, engineers, and we are going to use our clear vessel to see how all the sequence of uh, operations happen inside. We're going to see actuating the floats, the vibrating forks, the radar. We're going to see everything inside, not only the consequence in the HMI, we're going to be able to see all the internal components. We're going to create the emulsion with the inline mixer. So in the inline mixer, we have the mixer and we have a bypass. So we can see what is the difference of having one inline mixer, what quality of emulsion we're going to have and just a standard mix in a pipe. We're going to change what are the effect of the different flow rates. And of course, different flow rates, we're going to give you a different water oil ratio. We can operate it in manual mode or in automatic mode. In the system, we have provided manual bypasses so we can operate it manually and see how it works. What happens if I make mistakes? For example, one uh, common error that may happen is that the students may send oil to the water tank. It's not a problem. We already thought that that may happen. So you just fill up your water tank with enough water until the oil will be drained back to the oil tank by gravity. So we already provide the solutions for the possible errors that the students make make. We try to make it student proof, but you are teachers. So you know that student proof is a kind of large word. Normally we tell the students do not do A, B and C. And this is the first thing they are going to try to see why they, they should not do it. Perfect. So other features that we have in the three phase separator is what is the emulsion composition? What happens? We have a pressurized operation and non-pressurized operation. We're going to have our two Allen Bradley frequency drives so we can change the operating flow rates and the pressure for water and oil mediums. We're going to see how the gas pressure is going to affect the pumps. The students are going to learn to use all the standard control components and the standard measuring devices like the level transmitters, the pressure gauges, and the turbine flow transmitter. Also, we're going to measure the gas, the gas flow with the differential pressure transmitter and the orifice plate here in the train. We're going to use the HMI. The HMI is based in Allen Bradley technology and PLC from Allen Bradley. And everything is done using the standard PA, plant PAX library from Rockwell Automation. In the HMI, the students are going to learn how to manage the alarms using the Power Plus uh, 7 touch screen. We're going to use smart instrumentation using the hardware communication protocol. And we can use fault insertion for troubleshooting in the experiments. So here is a little description that we made already a tour. So basically we have the heart transmitters, the turbine flow transmitters, the rear level transmitter. So this is how our transmitters, they look. So we have the transmitter, it's just a standard industrial transmitter, but we place a small box with easy connections. So we can see there that we have two millimeter banana connections and we have screws. So we can make a fixed a circuit or we can change it using the bananas. Normally, the way the system is provided, all the instrumentation is going to be already installed with the screws. You can introduce errors to the system, some of the boxes. Let me move this camera here. Here in the boxes that we have in the instruments, so the students are, go are going to be prompted to open the instruments, 
change the parameters. We're going to guide them step by step how to change the parameters within the instruments, how to make all the connections. And we have here in the box, this small hidden door with a switch. So we can introduce faults to the system. This will be electrical faults. We have faults in the HMI and with the, the air valves, we can introduce mechanical faults as well. We have the manual valves so we can bypass the pneumatic valves. Perfect. So let's go back a little bit to the PowerPoint. And I think we're going to be ready for the demo. Okay. So we have the radar level transmitter. So this one, as I told you, is going to measure the level of the oil and the water using the flight principle. So basically it's same as the standard radar. It sends a pulse and receives two echoes back. The difference of time between the two echoes is the difference basically of level of the two surfaces. We're going to talk about the turbine flow transmitters. So in the books, we're going to go into very, very, detail of what are the physical principles that allow the system, each of the systems in the transmitters to work, how we're going to measure the parameters, and then how we transform these parameters into the 4 to 20 milliamp standard signal. So that's why it's a very good system for instrumentation. We're going to go very, very deep in the instruments with a lot of detail. Here we have the vibrating fork. We have three switches. So the vibrating fork is uh, going to have the two edges of the fork as we see. One is going to be vibrating and the other one is going to follow by resonance. If there's air being between both of them, the resonance will be the same and the vibration will be the same. If there's something else, water, oil, then it is going to change and the vibrating fork will know that, okay, the level has been reached. We have two models of the three-phase separator, the basic one and then the advanced. The difference between the basic and the advanced is the additional instruments that we may study with the same system. So the, uh, at the end of the webinar, Stefan is going to give us a little word about the two different models of the three-phase separator. In the flow options, we have an electromagnetic transmitter and a Coriolis transmitter for mass flow. In the temperature, we're going to have a J-tape uh, thermocouple with the temperature transmitter. Knowing that the temperature transmitter can read two temperatures, either RTD or J-type thermocouples. We can have the software configurator from Hart so we can connect to the instruments and change the parameters directly from the PC. Perfect, so let's take a look what is one day in the life of an instrumentation technician. It's a very small video that I'm going to share with you now.
Perfect. So that was a day in an instrumentation technician life. So as we can see, their work is very demanding. So the best way to train them is to make them face with the real instruments, the real stuff they're going to be dealing in their job. So that's why we came up with this system that is as real as possible. In a small scale, but real. Perfect, so we arrived to a small demo. We're going to try to recreate for you what we see in the screen. So we can see here the profile of the emulsion that we recreate and how it is separated into the oil, gas, and water. So right now I'm going to set my pumps. Okay. So 40 Hertz, each one. We're going to turn them on. As you can hear, it's a very silent system. And here I am going to recreate the oil that is coming out of the well. So I'm going to open my water and I want four liters per minute. My oil, I want, uh, let's say, three liters per minute. And let's put some gas. Let's say around one standard cubic feet per minute. So here we can see this emulsion. It looks like a vinaigrette. So the oil that is coming out of the well looks kind of like this. So it's a mix of water, gas, and oil. So now we're going to start dropping it down. The first part is going to make a large separation. Then we're going to go through the coalescent plates and we're going to see how our profile is going to be created here. So here we're going to see basically emulsion, a little bit of oil, a little bit of water and gas in the middle. And the three elements are going to be separated with the coalescent plates. So here we can see that the densities and the gravities are making the large part of the work. So now we can see here how it is getting separated. So if we see it here, we have a lot of emulsion. And here basically we have already our three elements. So our instruments, the, the radar is going to be measuring how much water and how much oil we have. Because the oil is going to be floating over the, the water and it's going to drop down this little wall here and get connect, collected in this area. So we have two floats. One float, that's the variable density float that we talked earlier. Remember the one that I opened the, the box and we have the levers, all these mechanisms inside. And we have this other float. This one is, well, it's not just like the toilet, but it's the same idea. Underneath, we have the outgoing hoses that bring the oil and the water back to the tanks. But here, hopefully we can see it in a moment. We have a vortex breaker. So we have the hole where the hose goes down and we placed two baffles, 90 degrees on top of it. Because when the oil is dripping down, it's going to create a little whirlpool and may suck some gas in. So we did not separate the gas from the oil. So we're going to cut this whirlpool with this uh, mechanical element. So we have that same element here in the water, just in case we don't have oil and we don't want the water to go back with the gas. In this case, yeah, the gas finally goes to the atmosphere because it's air. But in our case, gas is going to be propane or something like that we're going to use it. So we want to collect it and then we're going to reprocess it. So now we see here, after a while, the process. And we're seeing that we have just created the right profile in the three-phase separation. 
once the water level and the oil level arrive to the settings, we're going to see that the valves are going to open and we're going to see how much, in this case, water and oil is going back to the tanks. In the real industry, this will be how much water has been, let's say, produced that can be re-injected and how much oil we are producing. Perfect, so this will be a quick uh, demo of the system working. So from this point, then the students are going to start making their exercises. They're going to start changing parameters, changing what kind of emulsions they're going to make. For example, I'm going to switch right now from the mixer. I just close the mixer and I open just the standard pipe. And we're going to see another kind of emulsion coming here, or we can change the mix. The last thing I am going to show you just a little bit will be the HMI. So in the HMI, we have our process. We have all the readings of the instrumentation. We can have some alarms. We can acknowledge the alarms. We can change different parameters here. Close this one. And we can see how the process is working. We have, for example, the flow. We have the level. Let's give it a while until we have uh, water and flow. Okay, this one is not uh, having a graph because we have not reached the right levels in my tank. So we don't have water and uh, oil coming back yet, we just started the system. We can change of units here. Oops, I, uh, I touched the wrong button and I closed it, sorry. It was this button the one I had to touch and I touched this one. Sorry about it. I'm closing the HMI. Um, so do we have any, any other question? Uh, sorry, FX, can you help me here? I can't see my question panel. So okay, do, you have, okay. do we have any questions? Uh, we don't currently have new questions. Oh yeah, uh, there's one uh, about, uh, well, what duration, how many labs can we do uh, with the two manuals that you showed us, uh, oh. Gonzalo? Yep, so we go back to the PowerPoint presentation and uh, we have uh, that question there. Okay, so here we have some uh, frequently asked questions. So in the first manual, in the basic separation operation manual, we have around six exercises. It will be around eight hours. There are some exercises in that manual that are going to be done directly with the trainer and I think it's two exercises that will be more uh, related to the chemical part of the process. So will not be the trainer, will be how the process should be done chemically and then how the machine should, what the machine should do to let the process work. And in the other one, in the instrumentation, we have like five exercises that will be around six hours. So I would say, Directly with the machine, only the manuals, we'll have around 14 hours of uh, training with the equipment. That will be the minimum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so, and, and I'm sure that some teachers will find uh, ideas to do even more exercises than what's in the book. Oh yeah, well, both books are around, uh, I would say 400, 450 pages. So, we can see that it's not a large amount of exercises, but exercises are very, very well uh, written. I just finished studying the book like two weeks ago, and it's uh, really, really nice to to read. I've, uh, I've uh, learned a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, th there's still a couple of minutes to go. So please, if you have any remaining questions, uh, now is the time to write them in the questions box. 
So we can relay them to either Gonzalo or Stefan. Back to you, Gonzalo. Yep. So, uh, Stefan, I don't know if you want to add something else from uh, from your side. Yes. Yeah, so I can explain a bit more what is the difference between the basic three-phase separator and the one with instrumentation. So usually in the oil and gas training program, what we have, you have uh, two kind of job profile. You have the operator, the person who operates the production three-phase separator, who needs to understand the basic principles of the separation, and and uh, the operator can run the system in manual mode and better understand how it operates inside and what affects uh, the behavior of uh, the separation, the pressure, the the the, the flow rates for the oil, the water, and uh, if you if you uh, if you train uh, another kind of uh, trainee, uh, another job profile, an instrumentation technician or an engineer, so you will need to go further. So you need to cover the basic three-phase separator. But with the basic three-phase separator, with the instrumentation, you can also cover how to use instrumentation, how to uh, configure the multivariable uh, radar transmitter, and uh, you can do troubleshooting and you can go further so but with an operator it's not uh, required to go further but so but let's say that you want to train both job profiles you can do, you can do so so you can start uh, also you can select the basic preface separator and then the year after you can expand it uh, uh, with uh, the instrumentation add-on so if you want to go further with the equipment thanks so, so much uh, Stefan. you're welcome Okay, so this was a small presentation about the three-phase separator. Please don't hesitate to contact your Festo local dealer or your Festo local company for further questions, or you can write us to services at didactic at festo.com for any further question. For yeah, all Gonzalo. Uh, yes? Yeah, we, we do have one more question. Uh, yep. uh, do we have the option with Siemens PLC? since we have uh, Rockwell uh, PLCs in the one that you showed us. I would think uh, Stefan is a better position to answer that question. Yeah, we, we designed the three-phase separator using uh, Rockwell technology and then Resnauser technology because in the oil and gas industry, uh, they are both uh, re, uh, reused compared to Siemens. Siemens is less present in the oil and gas industry and that's the reason why we selected Rockwell, so it's not possible. But you know, uh, the 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 system is not about a PLC training. It's more about the operation of the of the system. And we use also uh, Rockwell technology because uh, Rockwell and uh, and Andreas Nauser have a strategic uh, alliance. So it is easy to configure and to uh, program the PLC using uh, Rockwell technology with Plan PX. Uh, software to integrate uh, the Andreas Nauser instrumentation. That's the reason why we selected that technology. Thank you. Thanks so much, Stefan. Always very useful in accurate information. So I think we're finishing our webinar for today. It has been a pleasure for me hosting uh, today with you. And please uh, contact us for further questions and see you the next time. Bye-bye.